Hey, how's it going everybody? In today's video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started working with fonts and Google fonts in CSS. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, let's get started, everybody. We will need an H1 element. Why don't you go ahead and type in your name? If your full name's pretty long, just use your first name, I guess. And we'll need a paragraph. To generate some text in VS Code, you can type lorem, then hit tab. That is good enough for now. To change the font style, we will go to our CSS style sheet. I'll select our H1 element. To change the font, we can set the font family property. Then pick a font. I would recommend a sans serif font. Serifs are these little projections on each character after each brush stroke. Sans serif fonts don't have these projections. Sans serif fonts are easier to read on a monitor or mobile device. I'm going to pick the sans serif font of Verdana. Now, not all fonts are universally accepted by all web browsers. For some reason, if we can't display Verdana, it's good practice to have a fallback font, one that's web safe. So to add a fallback after your primary font, separate each font with a comma. Let's pick Arial. If a web browser can't display Verdana, the next available font is Arial. That's why you may see two or three fonts listed for a font family. They're all fallbacks. Let's change our paragraph element. I will set the font family to be Lucida Console. If the font name contains any spaces, you can just place the font name within a set of quotes. For a fallback, I'll use Courier New. If we can't display the first font, we will use the backup font. Now to change the font size, there is a font size property. Normally it's 16, but you can adjust that number. Here's 18, here's 14, here's one. It's really tiny, you can barely even read it, like at all. Another unit of measurement is EM. Think of EM as the standard. 1 EM means 100%, it's the normal size. 1.1 EM is 110%. 1.5 is 150%. 0 0.5 is 50%. You may see either pixels or EM as a unit of measurement for the font size. Let's stick with 1 EM. You can change the font weight. Normally this is normal. You can change that to bold if you so choose. There's also font style. Again, it's normally, well, normal. You can change that to italic. That's enough for basic fonts. Now I would like to introduce Google Fonts. Head to this website, fonts.google.com. This website is free to use. Find two fonts that you like. You can also narrow down your search too. For example, I do not want any serif fonts because they're difficult to read on a monitor. I'll just use these two for convenience. I'm going to open these in a new tab. All right, we have Roboto and Open Sans. I'm going to select one of these fonts. I'll go with 400 regular. I'll press the plus sign next to this font. And we'll do so with our second font. I'll go with Light 300. To use these fonts, we need to link our HTML file with the style sheet. We can access that style sheet by going to View Selected Families. Be sure that this radio button is selected for link. Then we will copy this link. Within our HTML file, within the head element, I will paste that link. We now have access to those two fonts. My first font was Roboto. My second font, I already forgot the name of it, Open Sans. And there we go. That's how to link to the Google Fonts API. Now, if you do prefer, these fonts can be loaded from either a remote server or locally installed on a user's computer. For convenience, I'm going to create a new folder within my website folder named Fonts. Then heading back to Google Fonts, View Selected Families, I will download all. Once we have our file, it's a zip folder. I'm going to unzip it. 
we are looking for these TTF files. They look something like this. All we need to do is drag and drop these TTF files into our fonts folder. I forgot which one I used. I think it was Roboto Lite. These fonts are available locally. We no longer need to link to the Google Fonts API. We can delete that link. So now what we need to do is go to our style sheet and create a font face rule. We'll begin with the first font. At the top of our style sheet, type at font dash face curly braces. We will set the source attribute to be a URL then add a set of parentheses. The URL is going to contain the relative file path to one of these fonts. I would like Roboto. So I'm going to copy the file name. This is within the fonts folder. I'll place that first, then paste the name of that file, then a semicolon at the end. I'm also going to set the font family property then I can come up with the name for this font. I can keep it the same or change it. I'll keep it the same though. This font shall be known as Roboto Lite. For my H1 element, I will change that to be Roboto Lite. That has appeared to work even though we're not linked to the Google Fonts API. Let's add another font face rule. We will use our second font. Fonts slash whatever the heck is listed here. Uh, I'm going to rename this. This font shall be known as Open Sans. So we need to change the font for our paragraph to that new font. There we are. All right, everybody. So that's a few different ways in which you can work with fonts in CSS.